Hi, I'm Dawn Morse, the founder of Core Elements Training, and this is Katie Campbell, one of the tutors on our manual therapy course. In this short video, we're going to demonstrate some mobilization techniques for the cervical spine. I'm going to demonstrate rotation, lateral flexion, and longitudinal movement. These can help with reducing pain and increasing range of movement around the neck area. Ideally, we'd like to be able to support the client's head, so we're going to move them off, up off the couch slightly. Sometimes the client um, isn't comfortable with this, so you can um, rest your, head, your hands on the couch with their head on top of your hands. So if you could just slide up the couch slightly. Lovely. So always make sure you're supporting the client's head and you're comfortable. For full rotation, we're going to have the left hand cradling the ear. If it's painful at all for the client, because you're going to be asking for feedback continuously, just make sure it's not your hand positioning. Sometimes you may have folded the ear, or you might be pressing the ear into the skull, into the head. So positioning the ear just inside your fingers. Rotate, and make sure you do your pressure check again, your assessment movement. So we're not, if we're doing grade one or grade two, and we're staying well away from the pain and, and, and away from the um, end of range. So with the other hand, pop it on the side of their face, and then we're gently moving both hands together in a coordinated manner, and we're rotating the head on top of the shoulders. So we're rotating the cervical spine trying to make the oscillations even, even tempo. Grade one and grade two are always pain-free. These should reduce pain. And grade three and grade four are to increase range of movement. So if we show you grade four, assess the movement first. Did that movement feel okay? Mm -hmm. So if that felt okay, I felt the end of range there. Rotate round, stay in the end of range, a small oscillation. So the same rules apply for all of Maitland's mobilizations. Small oscillation for grade one, a large oscillation for grade two, a large oscillation for grade three, and a small oscillation for grade four. So all the rules are the same, and you can apply them to the different joints and movements. So that was rotation to the left. Rotation to the right. Again, we're going to get our right hand now, pop it around the ear. Our left hand now is going to be probably covering the client's ear. So if you want to talk to them, so you just be aware of this and make sure you take your hand off if you're expecting a reply. Elbows up and then just rotate again. Assessment movement first and then whichever grade you choose. If you could just pop yourself back on the couch a second. Lovely. So what the hands look like underneath the head, it's like this. And you're trying to move your hands in a coordinated manner to rotate the head. So for lateral rotation, again, as your client just to come off the couch and support the head. Don't just let the head drop, obviously. So always ask them to go back on the couch first and then tell them you're going to release their head. So for lateral flexion, try not to um, pinch their hair. So make sure there's enough movement at the back of the head. So when you move the head, laterally flex the cervical spine, ear to shoulder. You're not going to pull anything. So the assessment movement to check the end of range and to make sure it's not painful. And here, rather than a hinge through the cervical spine, ideally you want to create a nice sort of C, so a lateral C. Your hands are just supporting the cranium, cup the occipital bone, and then gently move the ear to the shoulder. And then here you can create your mobilization, depending on which grade you choose. Again, we don't want to hinge, so we don't want to hinge through any vertebrae. So you can use your fingers to feel for any blockages and trying to mobilize specific parts of the C-spine or just a general physiological where you're moving the ear closer to the shoulder. For longitudinal movement, the client's still in this position and this time you're going to cup 
with the web of your hand between your finger and thumb. You're going to cut the occipital bone underneath. And then with your other hand, you're just going to pop it underneath the client's chin, cradling their face in your hand. And you're going to bring the, the crown of their head towards you. In longitudinals, we're going to use oscillations. In traction, we're just going to sustain the traction or sustain that space. So again, just make sure you've got enough space that you're not pulling on the client's hair. Ask that the position is comfortable. Underneath the chin, two fingers, making sure these other two fingers, the little finger, isn't pushing on the front of the neck. Cupping the side of the face. Accessory movement first again. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. And then if that's okay, you can start your oscillations. So these are a lot smaller than other parts of the body. Obviously there's less range. This is an accessory movement, whereas the lateral flexion was a physiological because they can perform that themselves. An accessory movement is a movement that the client cannot perform themselves. This will help with increasing range of movement and decreasing pain around the neck. And again, just make sure you're supporting that client's head and ask them when you're ready to pop themselves back on the couch. And then just help them relax the head back on the couch. So these are techniques covered on our manual therapy short course. If you'd like to find out more, please visit www.coreelements.uk.com. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.